educator, the mental health coordinator at Fayette County Public Schools, and co-owner for The Wellness Within. Unapologetically Woman, Dr. Sharika Smith, that's you. Congratulations. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much. Such an honor. We are so glad to have you here. So when you were growing up, did you think this was in the cards for you? What did you want to be when you grow up? Grew up? Oh, um, I, well, first I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> that was short-lived. Um, <laughs> when I was in college, I thought about a doc, being a doctor, and I did chemistry classes. Um, and then ultimately, that was not my calling as either. Well, you might not be an MD, but you are <laughs> there a you PhD. Go. There you go. Um, and then I settled with social work, wanting to help families and children. Um, and just kind of break those barriers um, in some of our family's lives. So, And uh, so your so. mom played a big role Huge. in your, the trajectory of, of your path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, I have this memory of um, being in, in her office. She, of course, is in this field as well, uh, manages a homeless shelter. Um, and I remember her working with a family. There was a mother holding her small child. Um, and I remember a police officer coming and taking that child out of her arms. Um, and it was heartbreaking. I think I was in high school at the time, so very, very heartbreaking for anybody to see. Um, but at that moment, I knew I wanted to work in a field that would help prevent situations like that from happening. Um, so I don't even know if she realizes that's why I got to, well, she probably does by now, but to this field. Um, but that moment um, was my decision maker. I said, I don't want this to ever happen to any families again. Um, and so I wanted to just do something to, um, to kind of help. How do, what does your mom think about what you're doing now? She's very proud. Uh, she tells me that very often, um, like every mother is. But yes, Dr. I think she. <laughs> I bet she sits at home and she says it out loud to herself. You know? Yeah, she might. She might. She says it to me too, and, and loves loves just kind of boasting and, and being very very proud of of me. So I, I love that about her. So not only do you um, are you working in social work, mm -hmm. you work it with this in Fayette County Public Schools. Yes. So starting at Fayette County Public Schools, I was a school social worker at Booker T um, at the primary program, the elementary program. Um, and then I transitioned to Tate's Creek High School, which was my alma mater. So it was amazing okay. to get to go back to Tate's Creek High. and Getting be the, back to your roots. Exactly. Uh -huh, where I came from. Um, and be the school social worker there. So that was a, a great experience. Um, now I'm the mental health coordinator. So I'm at the district office working with other social workers, counselors, and mental health specialists. And what does that mean? What do you do? Um, making sure that they have all, the schools have the mental health services that they need in their buildings, right? So each of our schools, um, they can have from 200 kids to thousands of, of children in their building. Um, and so making sure that the right staff are in place um, to provide those mental health services, providing training and opportunities for the service providers, um, and then also crisis response. So in the event that we have a, a tragic death, a student or a staff member or a community event, um, I have a team that will go out and provide grief counseling. Wow. Yeah. But not only that, you're a business owner. Uh, yes. A little accident. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that story. Um, well, during COVID, um, that's when I a went back. A lot of things happened during COVID. A lot of things COVID. happened during COVID, yes, absolutely. Um, I was just sitting around like, what can I do next, right? Um, so during COVID, that's when I decided to go back and get my doctorate in social work. Um, and I actually got closer to a classmate um, while, while I was um, doing that program. And she and I just kind of had this bright idea separately to do a private practice. So we would be our own therapist and um, have our own company. Um, and then as we continued to get closer and talk, um, you know, about our dreams, we kind of melded together. And so we both co-own Wellness Within, um, which is black owned, uh, female owned, um, an agency that we um, are able to provide mental health services to students, I'm sorry, to children um, and families and adults in Lexington. And your, the co-owner is Sine Carter. Yep, Sine mm -hmm. Adams. Yes, Dr. Sine Dr. Adams. Yes, that, you're right. <laughs> yes, we finished our program together. We actually work at FCPS together and then own this um, company. So um, we have definitely gotten closer. And it's just amazing how our dreams kind of aligned and we didn't even really know it. So um, it worked out perfectly. A lot of things came out of COVID. Yes. And so, so did the understanding that it's okay to get help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you, what yeah. did you guys see? Very, very similar. Um, and and I, would, I would say um, mental health, of course, we know the stigma around mental health, right? What happens in the family stays in the family, especially in, in a lot of our families, right? But I think COVID and, and social media played a part in it, really amplified that mental health is real, right? Um, uh, we want to be mentally healthy. And if there's ever a struggle, if there's ever a situation that um, kind of takes us to needing additional help, there's nothing wrong with, with asking for that, right? Whether you're a, a child, whether you're an adult, um, whether you're a service provider yourself, a lot of mental health providers needed some help as well during right. that time. 
Um, so it just normalized it. And I think once we realized that, hey, you're not the only one, you're not alone, um, and there are service providers out there who look like you, I think that was one of the barriers. That well, and that, that's one of the changes yeah. that I've seen. You know, when I say a lot of things have happened, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of counselors, a lot of therapists, you know, that look different than they normally would. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was huge. Um, a, just kind of giving us that um, permission to go to that field. A lot of times, you know, people look at, look at black and brown men and women and say you're not really supposed to be at this point, right? You're, you should have been stereotypically, statistically, you should have been back here. Um, so breaking that barrier, breaking that stigma, breaking that stereotype, um, it's a goal for a lot of us. Um, and so to be able to graduate with 20 plus other black um, men and women with our doctorates in social work was huge. Um, and so a lot of us went to the private practice field to, to help, uh, you know, kind of break that stigma even more. Um, but also a lot of us went to teaching, a lot of us went to the school system. So uh, yeah, it was just an amazing experience. What's next for you? Ooh. You've done so much. <laughs> you know, I have this dream of uh, being on a TED Talk one day. Um, I do like to speak. I do like training. I like to, to, to I don't know, be a public speaker one day. Um, and so I don't know, I just kind of have this idea that I, I want to take my topic, take what I have to say, um, and share it with a, a larger audience. So a TED Talk is kind of what I'm thinking. I would love to be Oprah, but that's another, well, <laughs> another dream. Well, some, somebody's got to do right, it. Right, right. But a TED Talk, that's great yeah, because, that's well, it, you, but you've already served on different panels talking about mental health. Yes, yes. Why do you participate in extra things like that? Um, I, I honestly think it's about... Um, relating to the crowd. Um, when you think about who comes to those events, when you think about what the audience looks like and what they would like to see, um, I, I sometimes feel like that, that might be me. You know, not Dr. Sharika Smith, but a black woman, right? Especially when I'm speaking to um, a crowd of young people. Um, if they can see, I think after the, the event that I did with you all actually, um, a young college student, a black girl came up and said, oh my gosh, this was amazing, I can't wait to do this. You know, basically talking about seeing herself in my shoes one day. And I was like, that's exactly why I, you know, I do this. Um, but also to normalize, again, that I'm a black woman. I have you know, been through a lot of struggles my own self. Um, and to stand up here and admit that you know, needing mental health services, there's nothing wrong with that, um, I, I think is powerful for the community. Well, I'm, I'm not really anybody when it comes to the mental health realm. But I tell people, if you go and get help and you don't want anybody to know, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Or if it's amazing, do tell them. Right. <laughs> a lot of our clients come from word of mouth. You know, mm -hmm. if I can finally say, oh, I met this, this therapist. She's really, really good. Um, you're kind of having the same struggles I am. Uh, when, when someone is so comfortable enough to actually share that I'm seeking services too, it's very helpful for another person, right? Mm -hmm. But you're right. If you don't want to share it, it's, it's nobody's business but yours and the therapist. That's, that's fine. It. And so now, not only that, you focus um, a lot of your work on untreated trauma on black males. Yeah. yeah. What drives you to do that and tell us about that? Absolutely. So working with, working at the school system, of course, I do encounter a lot of young black boys um, and then looking at where our black boys end up sometimes, right? Whether it's alternative programs, juvenile detention, um, and then me, as men ending up in prisons. That was my focus when I did my doctorate in social work, right? Why are there so many black men um, in, in jail, in prison, in non-traditional schools? Um, and then as I kind of just continue to do my research, um, thinking about my own experience and the black men and families that I know, we don't talk about mental health at, at our dinner table. We don't talk about it over Thanksgiving, Be right? Strong. Right. Um, and so we have grown up, a lot of our men have grown up thinking, I can't show any weakness because, you know, I can't show, I can't cry, I can't shed tears, I can't say I need help because I'm supposed to be the strong one. Um, and so I really, really focused on trying to figure out where that comes from, uh, what can we do to stop that, and, and trying to change that trajectory. Um, but also just really acknowledging that our families, black families, do experience trauma at way higher rates than white families and other families, right? Um, but we seek mental health services way less. Um, and so I just kind of really wanted to dig into that. Um, a lot of the reason is because mistrust, right? If, if you're telling me to go get help, um, but these are my options, nobody who looks like me, nobody who can understand where I've come from, then I'm most likely not going to get help that way. Well, um, because we talk a lot about representation. Exactly. And it, and it really does matter. Mm -hmm. You know, because you've got to feel comfortable right. with sharing some of the things and the, that's going on with yeah. you and the thoughts and all yeah. of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think the more that we can put ourselves in front of, of that crowd, right, and say, I've been there. I, you know, I may still be in that situation. Um, or I may be working with someone else 
so I can kind of understand a little bit differently than someone else could. Um, I think that kind of opens up that um, idea of, all right, I can do this, and there's nothing wrong with that. So tell me about Lily May. Oh, Ellie May. Ellie May. <laughs> Ellie May um, was actually my, I called her my therapy dog. Uh, I was going through a very rough patch about, oh, how long ago was it now? Uh, 10 ish, 11 years ago. Um, and so during that time, Ellie May just happened to, was introduced to me. Um, she was my little her? Shih Tzu Maltese mix. I had a friend who needed someone to take Ellie uh -huh. May because uh, she couldn't take her somewhere uh, to her apartment. And so I said, oh, I'm not really a dog person, but she was cute. She was fluffy. I said, I'll give it a try. Um, so, yes, that actually was, um, and she was my little therapy dog. So she and I have been, been kicking it since <laughs> 2000, um, I guess, 11 now. Yeah, so. Well, speaking of kicking it, mm -hmm. when you were little, I've heard that you were kicked out of three <laughs> different daycares. What was that about? Is that in there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, this is how my mom and my dad explain this, right? They say, I was, I was very bored. I hear that a lot. You were bored in preschool. You were bored in kindergarten. You were bored in, in daycare. Um, and I think it was just about the challenge. You know, if, if I wasn't challenged or I probably wanted to read a book or something um, during nap time, um, I may have just stirred up the pot a little bit, made some, you know, decisions that weren't the best. Um, and so I just... I may have gotten kicked out of three day kids. <laughs> well, and one of the reasons that I bring it up is to let people know yeah. that just because something happens when you were a child, oh, yeah. that doesn't necessarily look Dr. Sharika Smith. I know. Dr. Sharika Smith. Yes, that's a really good point. Especially, you know, working in the school system, you do see kids who, who are, are, their behaviors are different, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to realize that there's something behind that behavior. There's always a reason behind the behavior, right? So let's figure out what it is. Is it because the student's bored, the child's bored? Is it because they need a different learning style? Is it because, you know, we're not meeting them where they are or meeting their needs? Um, as opposed to just labeling the child and saying, oh my gosh, they're, they're, they're not gonna make it because they're flipping chairs or whatever it is. Right. Um, because you can, you know, once we figured out what it was that I needed, you know, my needs were met and I thrived, I would say. Well, that. I would say you're thriving. Um, you were named Kentucky School Social Worker of the Year. Yes, that was amazing. I, I think, especially to be nominated by your peers and your and your principals. Um, respect. Respect, yeah. And it, it's very, this the field of social work is very, um, a lot of times you see the rewards years from now, or sometimes you may not see the reward of your work, right? So to be um, nominated and honored by my peers um, for the work that I, I had done, I think that was pretty amazing. I yeah. think you're pretty amazing too. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. I wanna kick it to you for the last word for young girls, young women yes. that's looking at Dr. Sharika Smith. Yes. Um, what kind of advice can you give them? I, I think as generic as it may sound, there are so many people that are working against us, right? So many people, whether or not they say it to your face or not, so many people don't wanna see you um, make it to higher levels. You know, you can do whatever you want as long as you don't pass me up, right? We have so many people who will cheer you on in your face and then behind your back do whatever they can to kind of knock you back down. Um, so even having that in the back of your mind, let that fuel you to work harder as opposed to not thinking that you can do it. Um, I really, really had to uh, reevaluate and um, adjust some friendships in my life because once I did make it to a certain position, their attitude changed. And I'm like, well, what happened, right? Dr. When I was, Smith when happened. we were here, we were okay. But when, you know, things kind of shifted, um, you know, the celebration stopped, right? And so I had to look to see who was still celebrating, celebrating me and still in my corner. Um, but anyway, I would just say to, to anybody who's watching, especially young girls, especially young black girls, you can literally do whatever you want. Um, and if there's a barrier, let's work to break it. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. You guys heard it from Dr. Sharika Smith. If there's a barrier, break it. But get where you want to be. Continue to watch as we celebrate other phenomenal women just like Sharika who are making changes.